Peter King, uh, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Peter, thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. Sure, Rich. How are you? I'm doing great, as always. Read your MMQB at the MMQB.com. And you had this uh, interesting chat with Gus Bradley, who is Mr. Sunny Disposition. Yeah. And he's still he's still looking for a silver lining with this with this, Peter. What 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 do you make of this situation? This poor kid blowing out his knee. Well, I mean, it's probably something that um, that look every time a player goes out to practice, especially a player trying to create a positive impression um, and working very very hard. Every time that happens, an injury is a risk, and an injury can happen. I think the long view of this, especially also with the Broncos rookie tight end going down the third round pick. Yeah, Hireman. Um, yeah, my, I think the long view of this would probably be uh, some version of, let's say, a. Uh, uh, <laughs> are we sure we want to be doing this? Maybe teams want to rethink how many times they want to put their players on a practice field making football moves. Uh, and when they're really trying to impress their new employers. And again, there's no blame to be put here. This has been happening at football for years and years and years. It's just football. It just happens. But all, I just think that I would probably try to rethink how often I wanted my players to be doing that. As far as the biggest difficulty for the, for the, uh, for the Jags is that, I mean, they haven't had a guy – on their team. They haven't had a rusher get double digit sacks in seven years. And so this was a vital player to their immediate uh, hopes of trying to uh, become a contender. And uh, they just don't have that kind of edge rusher that, um, you know, that Dante Fowler could have been and will be in 2016. Yeah, it's, it's really awful. I mean, I got sick to my stomach when I read about it. Yeah. But we're already, during the season, and I, I hear about it from Marshall, Michael, and the guys on the, on the game day morning set all the time, when we see some poor tackling in the NFL, they say there's not enough time to actually teach yeah. the fundamentals in the NFL because of the new CBA and the number of times you can pad the guys up during the season. So if we're already talking about these kids coming out of college that maybe we shouldn't put them out there because of the risk of what happened to, to Fowler, I mean, isn't that a problem in itself? I think it's a huge problem, uh, and it has become a bigger problem over the years. So, Rich, these are, these are issues that, in my opinion, are just not easily solvable. And I think the ones about the tackling and the poor tackling, I don't believe they are solvable. I think there's just, you have to accept the fact that there's going to be poor tackling in the NFL now because teams just simply do not work on it enough. Peter King of the MMQB.com and uh, NBC Sports joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So, Peter, what is going on? Uh, in the commissioner's office right now, as best you can tell. What do you think's going on? They're just, I think they're collectively shaking their heads, or at some point they must have in the last few days, saying, can you believe that this, no matter what we do, uh, no matter what we rule here, you're going to have 51% of the uh, uh, people are at least are going to be furious about this and are going to think it's a bad decision. It, it won't matter what the decision is. And it's like it's a classic snake bit situation for uh, a league office that's already been bitten by a lot of snakes in the last year. So what do you think is going to happen here? Uh, what do I think is going to happen? Yes, if you're sir. asking my gut feeling, yes, my sir. gut feeling is that Tom Brady, is they're going to – suspend Tom Brady for some short period of time. Um, does that mean two weeks, four weeks? I don't know. I think the punishment doesn't fit the crime uh, at all if that if he's if he goes for like four weeks. I understand as I delineated in my column today, um, I understand why uh, I think there are good reasons why he should be and why he shouldn't be suspended. Um, but I do understand also the incredible pressure right now that Roger Goodell must feel because there's so many teams out there, so many owners out there who feel that uh, the Patriots are the sort of fair-haired franchise in the league, even though I don't necessarily agree with that. But I think there's a lot of owners that feel like, uh, 
you know, the Patriots get the benefit of the doubt with the league office. So would they suspend them based on on the more probable than not language that was thrown yes. in there? Or? Yeah, because in the integrity of the game clause in the uh, you know in the in league bylaws. All Roger Goodell needs to suspend a player is what is called the preponderance of evidence. In other words, if the report from Ted Wells says it's more probable than not, I mean, what, again, this just bothers me about the report. He says it's more probable than not that Brady was generally aware. That's, in essence, what the report says. I mean, you're going to suspend a guy for that, especially look at the evidence. Look at how I... I uh, just the, the 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 eleven New England footballs at halftime of the AFC Championship game were checked with two separate gauges. So that's eleven footballs checked a total of twenty-two times. If you add up and divide, then uh, figure out the average pressure of the footballs at halftime of that game, it would be exactly eleven point three zero pounds per square inch. The ideal gas laws based on the weather in Foxborough that day and the use of the footballs for the time they'd be outside, the 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 the, uh, um, the average PSI per football uh, at that point, Rich, would be 11.30, and the ideal gas laws says if it's 11.32, it's okay. So. We're talking about suspend, uh, suspending the Super Bowl MVP, one of the greatest players in NFL history, in essence, that because the science says that the balls are two one-hundredths of a pound per square inch less than what they should be. Uh, I, you know, as you can tell, I'm a little bit dubious about why Tom Brady should be suspended at all. Peter, can you just hang for just one minute? Of and course. Thanks. It's Peter King. Let's take a 60-second break, and when we come back, just uh, have a few more minutes with Peter uh, here on The Rich Eisen Show. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to The Rich Eisen Show. Peter King, kind enough to hang on the phone line. Uh, Peter, the, the Wells report, as you pointed out, there's no red-handed evidence. There's... Uh, a lot of language more probable than not. And the one thing that leapt out at me from reading your column today that is the most potentially suspendable item is that Tom Brady didn't give up his phone in the investigation. And you point out that the commissioner gave up his phone in the Ray Rice investigation. And do you think that that, that may be the, the thing that the commissioner hits Brady hard for? And then I think it's going to, Rich, I think he's going to look look down upon that and I think um I think that and that that's from Mike Florio today or yesterday. I, I did not I'd forgotten about that until uh, he wrote about it. Uh and it's a very valid point because I think everyone in the league office who was asked, uh they were whatever they were, fifty for fifty in terms of they asked for cell phones and they got them from all these people. And uh, you know, I think that uh uh, Wells wanted to see Brady sell to corroborate whether there was anything else on the phone that that they could have found, uh, and Brady didn't want him to see that, or for whatever reason, privacy issues, whatever. Uh, and I think the NFL will look at that um, and not in a positive light. Well, I, it seems to me that that most fans want Brady hit here because of his press conference after the game or two days after the game when asked if he's a cheater and he said, I don't think so, and that most people, when they're accused of cheating in anything, if they didn't, would be a lot more right. demonstrative than that. And then when given a chance to say something to Jim Gray, demurred or demurred for however you want to put right, it, right. Do, do you think that this is what eventually the NFL is going to take into account or it's just going to be all the Wells report when it comes down to it? I, I mean, look, I don't know – how you suspend a guy for a waffling answer to a question in a press conference. I mean, I, you know, and a lot of these things, you know, some of the things, and I think it's going to be for what Ted Wells found is quote, a preponderance of evidence, end quote. Um, but some of the evidence in the Wells report, I just, I'm just not, I don't, I think they tried to do, to build all these bricks, brick after brick after brick, 
and they tried to do all these things. But at the end of the day, if you tell me that, see, Tom Brady gave these guys a bunch of autograph things, well, I mean, I'll just, Rich, I'll say this. You, you go around to all these teams. Every franchise quarterback signs jerseys for the ticket manager's charity auction sure. at his church or something. You know, I mean, all of this stuff happens everywhere in the league. Tom Brady was a serial, and still is, a serial signer for people in the Patriots organization. Well, and Peter, I think that's where Don Yee was in his statement hitting the NFL for handing the hitting the investigation over to people who didn't understand the culture of football. I think yeah. that's what he was, was referencing right. there. Yeah, I, I, there are some things that like that about making such a big deal about getting signed footballs or you know, signed jersey. I mean, it just it, that's that's silly. It it just doesn't. It really doesn't matter. And I think that at the end of the day, those are some of the things when I read them. They, in my mind, they they I think they really damage the credibility of the report. And then and one last thing on this report. Um, Peter, is that w what about is the league going to change about the officiating crew and the way this was handled on that day when you read the report that Walt Anderson was given a heads up about it and he admits for the first time in his 19 year career the balls go missing and he still uses them anyway? And uh, then, uh, that's insane. And the it's fact insane. that the balls go missing for eight or nine minutes, he can't find them. And then the balls just appear again. And he says, okay, all right, boy, that let's, was a close call. Let's, let's go. play. I know. When I'm, you have a bag of backup footballs that have been conditioned and measured back in the locker room. I, do, I mean, that is a crazy thing. But going forward, yes. what they'll do, I'm positive, is they will record every uh, – they'll record the PSI of every football before uh, the game. And then I'm sure that there will be – you know, they'll take two or three balls – and they'll they'll re, they'll check them at halftime just to make sure that you know they haven't gone down five pounds per square inch or, or something. Or how about just telling the quarterbacks, look, you're, you're you're paid a lot of money, you're professionals, warm up with different balls in the game balls. We're, as soon as yeah. the game balls are handed to us, they're ours. We're not going to yeah. hand them off to somebody who's a part-time employee from New Hampshire and yeah. let him just go to the bathroom with them. It just yeah. it boggles the mind how something know, like I, that could be possible. And I think what happened is. That Walt Anderson just thought, I mean, he, he had been told that the day before the game, but look, anybody who is going to tell him, hey, look, there might be some funny business going on with the football, so just make sure that, you know, you be careful with him the day of the game. And I think anybody who is told that would just think, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, gamesmanship by some team, one team or the other. And as soon as he saw the ball, he said, okay, fine, they're back. But clearly, it's something he should have paid attention to. And, uh, he, I mean, that's a huge mistake by Walt Anderson, in my opinion. Maybe you felt under pressure because the game was already delayed for the, the NFC yeah. Championship game. Could have been. Could have got to get out there yeah. and kick it off. Peter, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All the best, Rich. Take care. You bet. That's Peter King of the MMQB.com. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience. <laughs> 